Why is it that when you peek into many churches, it seems all that they're after is your money? My money, my problems. You see, the health and wealth gospels done nothing but distort our perception of the interconnectivity of our faith and finances. And it's leading to failure. Failure. Failure for the church because many people leave thinking this is a scam and it's free real estate. Failure for the individual because it ends up robbing you of something that Paul calls carpos. Oh, you don't know what that means? Well, stick with me today and I'll show you the secret to discovering the true blessing of ministry partnership today on Church Door. When I was a first year college student away from home, my spiritual journey was now in my court. There was no one waking me up in the morning telling me to go to church, nor would my friends be calling me concerned if I missed a week. So it was up to me to discern out of hundreds of churches in Memphis, Tennessee, which one would be a safe and challenging community for me to join. I can remember the first few weeks were slow. I had visited a church each and every week, and many of those were fine, but the third one really sticks out in my mind even to this day. I mean, this was a beautiful church. The yard was well manicured, and as you came into the front driveway, there was a huge pond right in front of the church. I entered the big building, and I snuck into the very back of this very packed auditorium. The worship was great, but then came the message, or at least what I would call five minutes of talking, followed by a call for money for the rest of the service. Now, by this point in my walk with Jesus, I had already cultivated a really healthy habit of giving, but what happened in that church today really made me question some things about finances and the church. This pastor, only after five minutes, pulls out a stack of envelopes, 300 that were labeled $100, 200 that were labeled $1,000, and 100 of them labeled $10,000. He says, the Lord has told me that all of these envelopes will be taken today and it will begin now. The music started to play and people began to line up. Now, in that moment, I thought, wow, this is pretty amazing. These people are really generous. Nothing seemed to be wrong up to that point. And as I saw the last few people approaching the stage, I could tell there were still many envelopes that remained. No more than a few seconds later, the pastor stopped the music Stop right there. and began rebuking the congregation. And what he said has been burned into my mind to this day. He said something like this. If you don't come now, you are being unfaithful to God. Yo, this was like a punch in the gut. The God I serve never had made me give out of compulsion. You see, this is when we run into issues in the church. We force the movement of generosity from conviction, compulsion. Pauline, give me some of your thoughts. No, go find your own. We end up distorting something that is supposed to be beautiful and formative in our Christian walk. And without a doubt, this single encounter made me super skeptical for many years to come. There's no telling how many other Christians have had similar experiences in this area, and they end up doing what I ended up doing, which is stop giving altogether. What I did not realize in those years was I was actually robbing myself of something, being robbed of the joy that comes from being part of something greater than myself. Somehow I'd been tricked into believing that holding on to my money was somehow better than the blessing that I was missing. So many have fallen into this trap from the devil and I think he laughs when we do it because ultimately it's tying up kingdom resources and it's also tying up our spiritual growth. So how do we untie this failure? As we're finishing our study in Philippians 4, we see Paul addressing generosity within the church. He makes a few distinctions we should take note of in light of this discussion. And this is what he says. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves, you know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but that I seek the fruit increases to your credit. I've received in full payment and more. I'm well supplied and have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. In these verses, we see Paul expressing his gratitude to the church in Philippi for their partnership, specifically that partnership manifesting itself in tangible and financial needs. That's why I'm calling this message the true blessing of ministry partnership. In these scripture, Paul also makes a crucial distinction, and that is this. It's more about the fruit you get than the gift you give. In other words, there is something that we miss out on when we choose not to partner with other like-minded Christians in ministry. Then what is it that we miss out on? What's that word I mentioned up at the top? Carpos. This is the Greek word for fruit, but not like pineapple or pear. I'm in pineapple heaven. Wait, am I? This word is specifically in line with the idea of accruing interest. It's a financial term. We see it in verse seven. Not that I seek the gift, but that I seek the fruit to increase your credit. Paul is saying that there's something more I want for you, more than what I get out of your generosity. When you partner with others in ministry, you receive something that grows with interest. Then comes the question, what does this partnership look like and what do I gain? But you're going to have to wait until next week to find out the answer. Hey, do me a quick favor, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step with Jesus. Now I know I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger, but we still wanna hang out with you. Maybe you need a little more encouragement. Go, go ahead and hit that button right in the center of the screen for another video that I think is gonna encourage you.